Since he was a child, his voice oh, was powerful. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Almost two decades later, and his voice continues to resonate as an author and as the only international human rights lawyer based in Guam. I've always, um, even before, I mean, in my previous lives as a non-lawyer, even as a writer, I cared about social justice and human rights issues um, really deeply and passionately at first as a writer, as you know, too. So I kind of started out my life mostly as a singer, then a writer, and then a lawyer. And so international human rights law just became, um, it just made the most sense because I get to sort of fight for justice. But His name should sound familiar. Attorney Julian Uggen led the legal battle to legalize medicinal marijuana locally and most recently was a special assistant attorney general in the controversial Dave Davis lawsuit. In this case, District Court of Guam Chief Judge Francis Tadinko Gatewood determined the tomorrow only vote for self-determination was unconstitutional. The case is currently on appeal. What really bothered me was this sort of like constant sort of perversion of the narrative around equal rights and equality. It's like almost like in this country, in the United States, like even equal protection, the way it's evolved, um, just the jurisprudence of equal protection, it's really, it's experienced kind of like a perversion. Like I'm so like the law in, in so many ways is evolving in exactly the opposite direction that it should be evolving. You know, it seems like the more and more, um, it's more and more the case that the only people benefiting under the 14th Amendment are people who are never historically in need of its protection. So this is a really scary sort of proposition. Aside from fighting battles here at home, Uggen is fighting injustices across the Pacific. He is the founder of Blue Ocean Law. There's like U.S. domestic legal violations, I mean, civil rights violations, but there are also international human rights violations, and those two are not necessarily one and the same. You know, they frequently overlap, but in a place like Guam, which is a U.S. territory, we experience both, both, like, yeah, constitutional issues and human rights issues. Um, and in the Pacific, there's an even wider array of just grave injustices. Genocide is happening in West Papua by the Indonesian military, and so that's one of the causes that my firm, Blue Ocean Law, really cares about and tries to engage in. There's the unresolved um, horrific consequences of nuclear testing. Um, when the U.S. Um, basically detonated 67 atomic weapons on the people and the islands of the Marshall Islands. And so they're still sort of reeling from the consequences and impacts of that nuclear testing program. And so there's injustice kind of like across the Pacific. With so many injustices to fight, how do we win the war? The way I approach it, um, not only as a human rights lawyer, but also as a human being, is that sometimes it's too daunting to look at it that way in terms of the war. I think the most some of the most important work is the art of breaking down that war into bite-sized battles and winning them one by one. Like, so that, that's a really strategic way that we look at it as, like, my firm, Blue Ocean Law. We, when we're faced with, like, the things happening in the Marshall Islands or what we were talking about, um, the genocide in West Papua, these are huge, huge cavernous issues. They're, you know, that they're mammoth issues. And I think part of the work of human rights lawyers is to, you know, provide hope to communities really engaged in the struggle by trying to be strategic about identifying what are winnable battles and trying to win them. At the very least, fight them, you know, uh, whether it's in court or outside of court, on the, in, in the streets, in the court of public opinion. Like part of, like, the brilliance of human rights law actually in this country and other countries has been to sort of use courts as sites of cultural performance, to use legal process, litigation, lawsuits as this sort of, um, as a courtroom for an, like a kind of, like a bigger ideological battle. You know, like that's partly like why um, even in the Vietnam War, you, you try to argue for innovative brand new like legal defenses. You try to push the law to evolve and to meet present circumstances. And that's what we try to do even in our firm. According to Uggen, Blue Ocean Law is a boutique international law practice providing a broad range of legal services for governmental, intergovernmental and non-governmental clients in Guam, Micronesia, and greater Oceania. We're working right now on this major um, new extractive industry sweeping the Pacific. 
um, region. It's called experimental seabed mining, or it's also known as deep sea mining. Basically, um, like huge actors like the European Union and huge corporations like multinational corporations are trying to mine the ocean floor. Um, Sabrina, they're actually calling it now the new global gold rush. It's just because there's the, the staggering amounts of mineral wealth on the bottom of the sea. And it just happens to be the case that it's really in and around the waters of several Pacific Island countries. So what you see is this crazy process of trying to fast track legislation, fast tracking legal frameworks that just merely to exploit these resources in a kind of like non-cautious, super irresponsible way. And so Blue Ocean Law has been directly engaged with other um, civil society organizations throughout the Pacific trying to really press pause on that process to try to identify if there's under other international human rights laws, international environmental laws, to arrest the spread of that kind of process, to protect indigenous communities living along the coasts of several countries, including Papua New Guinea and others. As Attorney Uggen uses his voice to fight for injustice, he's amazed and inspired by others who are using theirs. I think it's something beautiful to behold, you know? I mean, it's, as they say, there are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. I think, I think people are finding their voice now, and that's something that's quite beautiful to see. I mean, and people, we can be part of, you know, this community and contribute to this community in very distinct ways. I mean, you know, whether it's being a lawyer or an artist, even a spoken word artist. Um, and there, there's just so many ways to skin this particular cat, you know, and I think it's, I think it's really beautiful, and I think there is a resurgence. I think it's, um, for me, I remember when, um, it just felt like there were a lot, f there were just a lot fewer people at like certain kinds of gatherings. And now it's like, there's just an array of people. And it's like, in like increasingly young people, like just younger and younger, you know? And now it's like, uh, they're my generation, so many of us have children. And now I, I like to see them bring their children, or, you know, these little, babies are cutting their political teeth on these campaigns and it's kind of like, it's kind of awesome to watch. 